All righty. <clears throat> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn that the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast or given freely as a gift to he who obeys him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe in this state. You should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints watching in, the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. So on this uh, glorious, you know, well, the end of a glorious day, the great day, the eighth day of the feast, we uh, we're going to try to close out talking about the great day, the eighth day of the feast. Y'all remember last. So last week we talked about the uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, right? The in gathering. And we talked about the first day. So we even talked about how it lasts seven days. Let's just read it one more time to refresh our memories. It's uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 19. No, that's not right. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 30, what? 30 something? Uh, 19 is too early. The 30, 34. It's Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. Watch what the book say. This is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 34. All right, one second. Can't buy good help. Goodness gracious. Take it easy. We can tell the children of Israel saying the 15th day of the seventh month. Shall so be on the 15th day of the seventh month, we're in the seventh month now. This marks the 15th day of our Hebrew month. He said, what now? There'll be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Right. There'll be the Feast of Tabernacles. Right. Remember, we talked about last week, a tabernacle is a tent. Right. So it's like a, a temporary place for us. Right. So he says the Feast of Tabernacles. Watch the book say. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Uh huh. Seven days, seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire. How many days? Seven days. So he said for seven days straight, you make an offering. What happened? Offering, offering made by fire unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. This day shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. Mm -hmm. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Mm -hmm. To offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offering, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord and beside your gifts, beside all your vows and beside all your freewill offerings, which you give unto the Lord. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep the feast of the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And right. So this is the eighth day. You say you keep it seven days on the first day as a Sabbath, but on the eighth day as a Sabbath. So we call this the great day. Actually, we got that from Yahushua. Or from the gospel, rather, right? Uh, go, go real quick. Go to John chapter seven. This is John chapter seven. Give me verse thirty-seven. John chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. This is John chapter seven, verse thirty-seven. Let's see what the book says. You on mute over there? No, I'm uh, uh hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I don't want to see uh, I'm my man's over there. Do -do -do. Hey, yeah, I'm hey, saying we're gonna put the I'm gonna see put the there. little, yeah. I'm saying we put the little, yeah. I'm saying you know that. You know the rainbow thing when you know what I'm saying on TV, you know what I'm saying? To put that thing up like Doo! you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna 
hey, I'm a single parent right now, okay? That's right. I know that's right. <laughs> my wife, my wife went on a four day hiatus. He said, "I'm out of here." <laughs> now you putting all your pity on us, boy. Hard <laughs> <laughs> for a dad out here. You know what I mean? <laughs> In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahushua stood and cried, saying, "If any man thirsts, let him choose. Let him let him come unto me and drink." Right. Yeah. So he said, "On that last day." It says the great day of the feast. That's what this is talking about, right? It's talking about the eighth day, that great eighth day of the feast, right? So he told him, he said, on the last day, the great eighth day of the feast, he walked up and he started talking to folk. He said, listen, yo, 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 if anybody thirsty, let them come to me. Watch what he say. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right? So he said, he that believes on me, then he pauses and he says, as the scripture has said, right? Then he tells him what's going to happen, man. It's going to be like out of your stomach, rivers of living water coming out. So he's saying the difference is you will produce life as an individual, as opposed to, you know, in our time now, we almost produce death, right? He's saying you will produce life, right? Keep going. But this spake he of the spirit which that which they that believe on him should receive. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost was not yet given because Yahushua was not yet glorified. That's right. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is a prophet. Others right. Heard, so they thought they looked at him and like, OK, yeah, he's a prophet of a truth. He said this, this is a prophet that we're dealing with. Keep going. Watch this. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some said, so the Messiah come out of Galilee. Right? So now you got to look at him. Y'all have to set yourself in the scene, right? It's the great day of the feast. So you know what our law say, right? Every, every, uh, every feast, three times a year, right? We have to come out, everybody. That was our law, right? So we had our country. And even the people that was outside our country, a whole we got right now, go to, um, go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, give me verse... Uh, uh, I'll just start me at verse one. It's Acts chapter two, verse one. Right? We have in our law, it tells us three times a year, every male must show up. Right? It's book, it's scripture, it's a must. Right? You have to do it. There's no other way to do it. Three times a year, it has to happen. Right? This is Acts chapter two. This is one of the times a year that everybody got to show up. Watch what happens. Acts day, chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they right? Were when they say weeks. Pentecost, it's talking about the Feast of Weeks. But this, this is one of the days that the Most High God told us in our law that we have to show up all the males. Watch this. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. Only there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And mm -hmm. All the house where they were sitting. Mm -hmm. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, mm -hmm. now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now watch, watch the language that they speak in. Right. Every man heard him speak in his own language. And he just told you it was Jews, meaning <clears throat> Hebrews, Israelites. Right. Israelites, devout men of all nations. In other words, these are Israelites that came from all over the place. Right. And then what else happened? And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, behold, are not all these men which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in his own tongue wherein he was born? Part right. Two. So they looking and they looking like, whoa, 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 the folks that's talking from Galilee. Right. Galilee is up north for us. Right. So it was all in Israel. But Galilee was up north. So they looking like the people that's talking from Galilee. They are people. But now we hear all these other people and we know that they not from Galilee. They from some of these folks from Greece. Some of these folks over here from Tarshish. Some of these folks over here from, you know, all, all these different places. 
but yet we hear them speaking in our language. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judah mm -hmm. and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt and the plains of Libya about Cyrene, the strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Right. So these are all the different nations from which Israelites came. He called them Jews. They was us. These are people. Right. Yet he heard them speaking in his own, their own tongue. The only reason all of them is there from all these nations is because it was law for us to show up. So anybody who looked at themselves and said, you know what? I'm a Hebrew. That ain't good enough. I'm an Israelite. That ain't good enough. Oh, I'm of Yehuda. That means I got to keep the laws of Yehuda. Right. In our history that we reading through what just happened. Right. J didn't the northern tribe just get exiled by Assyria and get spread out to all the nations for not keeping the law. Right. So the people of Yehuda, we looked at it like, oh, we have to keep the law in, or in order to be identified as Yehuda. You have to keep the law. So what they look at in their mind is even if I'm going all the way across town and I'm up in Spain and I live in Spain and that's where I choose to live as an Israelite three times a year when the holiday come. Guess what? I'm going to catch that flight and I'm going to come show back up in, in Israel. Right. So that's what that's what this was. So Yahushua, you, I'm just saying that all this so we can put it all in perspective. Yahushua is now at the feast, the great day. And now he's talking to people. And he just jump out and pop up and say, yo, 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 if anybody needs something, you thirsty. Come on over here to me. Right. Why don't you come talk to me? I got it for you, because if you mess with me and you believe on me the way the scripture tells you to believe on me. Man, out of your belly will come rivers of living water. Right? Then the commentary from the book looked at him and was like, well, you know, he talking about, you can go back over there, T. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He talking, he talking about, you know, the Holy Spirit, although the Holy Spirit had not been given yet. But the Holy Spirit was given just now what we read in Acts chapter 2. Right? So now after that, the folks, everybody standing around. It's a big group of people, people from all over the world. Right? That identify as Yehuda. Right? People from all over the world standing around, they looking at the man. He talking all this craziness, but he also doing miracles. So <clears throat> now they having a discussion. Go back to you, uh, what, what verse we live off? 41. John chapter 7, what verse? 41. 41. So this is John chapter 7, verse 41. Watch the discussion that they're having because they're witnessing him. Not everybody is from here. So some people saw these, these miracles with their own eyes. Some people got into town and was like, yo, it's this one dude. His name, Yahushua. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, he ain't he ain't all that good looking, but he do be like, you know what I'm saying, doing some miracles and like healing people and doing some weird stuff. But he talk crazy sometimes. Like, imagine somebody just walking up and be like, if you thirsty, I'll make rivers come out of your belly. If you look at it and you like right now, we've been kind of over spiritualized. Right. So, like, we kind of expect that certain thing because we've been taught Yahushua. But our people are pretty literal. Right. Unless you a prophet. Right. When you a prophet, that's when we look at him. Hmm, what does that mean? Right. But our people are pretty literal. So when he comes, he's he talking about, yeah, you know, what I'm saying out of your belly. He talking to you like he's not a prophet. He just talking to you like a regular guy out of your belly. You know, what I'm saying you get living waters. Right. He ain't saying thus says Yahuwah. He ain't saying none of that. So you listening to the man. It's like, man, I don't know who this is. So watch how they debate back and forth about who is he? Like, is he anybody? Is he this person? Is he that person? Watch this. Others this is said, John chapter 7, verse 41. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some said, shall the Messiah come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that the Messiah comes of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Right? So they know that he's from Galilee. What they don't know is that he was born in Judah, in Bethlehem. What they don't know is that he's of the seed of David. They don't really know that about him. All they know, the only thing they know is that he come from Galilee. And he does come from Galilee, but he wasn't born in Galilee. He was born in Judah. He was born in Bethlehem, right? So they they looking at their scripture and they know the prophecy well enough to know that our Messiah is going to be a son of David. They know that prophecy. They also know our Messiah is going to be of Bethlehem. They know that prophecy. So they look at this guy and they like, where are you from? Oh, no, I'm coming from Galilee. Anyways, yo, if you follow and believe on me, like the scriptures say, I make rivers of living water come out of your belly. You look at that and you looking like, I mean, you talking like big, big boy talk, but you from Galilee. 
right? That don't really make sense. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing coming. We look at Galilee like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Galilee? Yeah. Galilee is like the east side. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? We don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll go if I have to. You know what I'm saying? If the other, you know what I'm saying? If the, if the, if the other Sam Club ain't open, I mean, I might as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's kind of what it's like. You know what I'm saying? Galilee like the west side. You know what I'm saying? It's like you standing, you in, you in, you in, you in Summerlin, Seven Hills, and somebody tell you, now we about to go to Mario's Market. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? There's the Albertsons right down the street. They have great chicken. Right? It's like, you know what I'm saying? You look at it, it's like, mm, no, that's how Galilee is for us. So Galilee, he's talking about Galilee. You got somebody talking, trying to tell you they the Messiah coming from Galilee. You might smack them in their mouth. Like, don't ever disrespect the Messiah. Nobody from the Messiah coming from no darn Galilee. You poor, broke, you know what I'm saying? Get your butt out of here. We in Judah. That's kind of how we looked at it. Like, Galilee, probably, he's probably sinning up there. Who knows what you're doing in Galilee? Right? So they looking at him like, man, I don't know. He, that boy sound real. He doing a miracle. Yeah, but that boy from Galilee. Right? Listen to him talk. Watch this. So there was a division among the people because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then right? Then, so some of them wanted to take him. When they say take him, what do you think it's talking about? Kill him. They wanted to gaffle him up. Because you causing a commotion. You presenting yourself like you somebody special, but you really not. But everybody divide. Like some of them is like, man, come on, I think we should get this boy. Right? The others are kind of looking at him like, I don't know, man. He just did a miracle. And I ain't never heard nobody say my belly gonna be like living water. Like that's it's attractive. Imagine somebody just talking fly to you. You ain't never heard nobody talk like this. But at the same time, it don't make sense. Right? You hear them. And it's like, you say it with all the confidence. It sounds like you got some real game, but it don't. What you're saying literally don't make sense to me. But it's like, man, you might be saying something cool that I never heard of. And then he slaps somebody on the head and they leprosy is healed. That's different. Like, we never seen nothing like that in our life. So we looking at it like, nah, this the one. But there's other boys that's a little more cautious. They looking like, nah, that ain't him. That ain't him. Matter of fact, and he tricking y'all. And since he tricking y'all, Let's gaffle them up. So everybody's in division about it. Keep going. Watch this. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, why have you not brought him? The right. So now the officers came to the chief priests and to the Pharisees, and they asked them, they looking like, why haven't you gaffled them up yet? Because the chief, look, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they feel responsible for all the people. So you got to look at it from their point of view. They looking like, this man, this man is going to cause a problem for us, right? He's not the guy, clearly. He's from Galilee. Now, a whole bunch of people think he's the guy, and they're going to mess around and get us in trouble by thinking he's the guy. Watch this. Keep going. Then answered them of the Pharisees, are ye? Officers answered, never man spake like this man. Look, ain't no, we've never heard nobody speak like this. Is what they just said. They said, never a man spake like this man. In other words, I ain't never heard nobody talk like he be talking fly. He be saying some crazy stuff. I've never heard any say it with confidence. He don't be blinking, don't be shaking. Voice don't crack. Man, just pop out. Yo, yo, yo. Anybody, you know what I mean? Y'all thirsty? Man, come holler at me, man. I'm telling you. You got some, you know what I'm saying? Belly become rivers of living water. I don't know what that means. But the way he just said that, that man said like, like he might just make something crazy like that happen. And I am kind of thirsty. So he looking like, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk. So they looking like, look, we ain't brought him in because we ain't never seen, we've never heard nothing like this. He they trying to talk to him like, have y'all heard him? If y'all heard him, t- I've never heard nothing like that. So no, we didn't grab him. Watch this. Then answered the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus said unto them, He that came to Yahshua by night, being one of them. Does our law judge any man before it hear him and know what, right? what he does? So listen, so Nic- Nicodemus, so look, the Pharisees, they came up, they looking like, you believe in this man? You being deceived too? So they look at, you have to look at it from their point of view. They think Yahushua is a deceiver. They not looking at Yahushua like, oh, you are the Messiah, but I'll, that's how Christians propose it to us. The Christians will make us feel like the Pharisees, the evil Pharisees stood up. They knew this was the Messiah. They were jealous of him being the Messiah, so they killed him. But that's not how it played out. 
they were skeptical. They knew their law and they looking at it in the way they understand they understood their scriptures. They looked at it like there's no way this guy could be the guy. They looked at prophecy the same way we look at prophecy and say, oh, the end of the world is coming. <coughs> then. And Donald Trump is the Antichrist or Joe Biden is the Antichrist and all this stuff that they be throwing out. Every president we get is the Antichrist or every every next ruler. Russia, you know, what I'm saying Putin is the Antichrist or whatever. All these different things they come up with. That's the same thing that they doing. They looking at the scripture and they saying, oh, this is what I think is happening. So they looking at it and they looking at the scripture like, no, nah, you don't line up, buddy. I know you talk crazy and I know you're doing some some miracles. I don't know how you're doing it. Made a little hocus pocus you're doing. But you don't line up with the scripture. So they being strict according to the scripture based off of their understanding and they just don't see it. Right. That's important to understand because we're going to have to deal with the exact same thing. We're going to have to deal with the exact. It's going to be some. I'm, I have no doubt in my mind. Somebody going to pop up and be like, yo, 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 I'm the prophet of the most high God. We've never seen a prophet. Right. The closest thing we didn't darn seen to a prophet was it was a guy named Benny Hanna. What's the dude name that be making people walk? <laughs> What's his name? The one, the dude that make people walk. Ben Ain't no Ben I mean. What's his name? You know what I'm talking about, right? He like the Mexican Christian dude. He be having a thing, and the people come on stage yeah, on TV. He smack him with the darn thing, and they but get up out that wheelchair and start pop locking in front of the whole thing. I'll be looking like, oh, that's a bad. When I was little, I used to look. I was like, now that's a bad boy right there. <laughs> What's the dude name? Benny Hinn. Ask my mama. My mama. Benny Hinn. There we go. Peter Popoff. That's what Sister Sharon was telling about. All he, Peter Popoff. That's a bad name. I've I ain't never, never seen Peter Popoff. I've never heard of that person before. I didn't know that was a real thing. You gave Peter Popoff a little money? Hey, T. Hey, T. Who is that? Hey, T. We can change the whole game right now. <laughs> Sam, come up here real quick. Who is that? Just come up here real quick. Act like you can't walk, though. Yeah, just yeah, like that. Hey, come up here, just like that. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I came a long way to see you. <laughs> yeah, you got to get up here so the people can see. <laughs> Look, it's it about to be believable, too. Look. I came a long let me tell you something. You got to stand up just a little bit so the people can see you. Look at that. Okay, you know what happened to me? Is I had a hard ballet. <laughs> and what's the I the feel with the family, you know, with how you, you know, this and you know, well, Let me tell you guys something for 1999. <laughs> I will put the holy water on his head right now. <laughs> go, somebody go find him a wig real quick. We'll make that thing grow right now. Look, he hasn't walked in years. <laughs> Pop lock. Oh, oh. Look, we a change. We had changed the game. I appreciate it. <laughs> we had changed the game just right there. It'd be that easy. We'd go from, you know what I'm saying? Look, she ain't talking about my glasses now. You know what I'm saying? She talking about my glasses now. Listen, yeah, I have some glasses after that. You know what I'm saying? It thing would be real. Because that's all it takes. You show the people a little something, give them something to believe in. That's it. Listen, how long, T, how long we've been sitting here and just purely preaching the word, right? I mean, just the word. All we do is teach the book. How long have we been doing that? About eight to ten years, something like that. Been almost ten years. We've been doing it. longer than ten years. It's been it's been longer than ten years. It's over ten years we've been sitting here, right, preaching the word. But guess what? When you only put the word out there, the book say it grab who it's supposed to grab. The reason why you got to put the extras on and you got to sprinkle the holy water and slap people with the holy cloth and do all the extra stuff. Because you're trying to grab more than what God asked you to do. You're trying to get extra. Right? But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I might need a little. What did you send them? 1999? 1980. Woo! Woo! He had you on a subscription for the miracle? No, it was, it was different amounts. But I realized it. Who is that? Letter. What did he send you? So he had sent you a letter saying what? What was the letter saying? Like different. 
Oh my goodness um, gracious. Who 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 is that? <laughs> she said, "Don't worry, but I ain't gonna put her out there like that." She she being vulnerable right now. You know what well, who, it was who, a rough time in her life. Okay. It's easy. That's how I go. That's how I go. So that's 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 what the that's what a lot of these pastors and that's what a lot of these people do. They put themselves in a position to look higher and look better and look more powerful. Look higher, more powerful than than all the other stuff that's going on, right? And then what that does is that attracts more than what the word alone would attract. Right. So now I can sustain myself, right? I can look at if I opened the bill, if I if I went down over there. And I tried to buy one of these churches or rent out one of these churches. I would feel the pressure too, right? Because some we, especially doing what we doing, right? We preach this word and it's like, okay, all right, T. I think we got enough people now. We fill up some seats. It ain't nothing. It's too many people from my house. Everybody want to show up in person. I gotta go rent out this church. So I gotta rent out the church and I say, you know what? Tear all the crosses down because I know Sister Pamela ain't coming with some crosses in there. So you tear all these crosses down. That gonna charge. They gonna charge me extra for that. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I pay them out. Then we good first two weeks because everybody support them. First two weeks, everybody show up like, yo, 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 it's good. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's that real work. But then I get to, you know what I'm saying? Then I get to touching on some serious stuff. You know what I'm saying? I get to touch on, what I touch on, T? What's the, what's one of the ones that make them go away? Other than marriage. Marriage, we know marriage. Get them out of here. Uh, what's the other one, though? Repentance and sin. Huh? Repentance and sin. Repent. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get talking about, oh, yeah, now you're going to hell. Right? No, you didn't talk about now you're going to listen, I get it. I understand. No, you're trying real hard. But if you don't actually turn away from all sin and stop completely, you're going to hell. There ain't no way around it. I mean, but I don't even feel like such and such is a sin. But now I say it right there. That's a sin. It is. Right? That get them out of there. You get to get to arguing with them, or you get some of the Hebrew Israelites, they support the first time they yeah, it's a Hebrew brother, this, that, another. Then you get to tell them, well, you know, you don't got to keep the whole law to get into the kingdom. Oh, that's it. All the Hebrews are going to stand up in one accord like this. Shoot. You. And then walk right out of there with their dresses on. You know what I'm saying? And now you're looking at them like, but I need y'all back next week to pay tithes because I got a rent to pay. And that's when you start shucking and jiving. Right? That's the pressure that come with it because you got to make a hard decision. So what you're talking about is actually you got you to try to keep the lights on. Right? So it's like you got to make a tough decision between what does the book say? Right? Or what can I get away with? Right? And a lot of Christians do that. These Christians are slick. They nice. What they'll do is they'll say, you know what? I'm going to only talk about what the books say. But I'm only going to talk about the stuff that feels good. So I'll talk about grace. Or I'll talk about forgiveness. I'll talk about um, I'll talk about I'll talk about being able to 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 believe and have faith in God. Right? I'll talk about what God did for us at the cross. I'll talk about all of these large, non-specific concepts, but I'll never make it practical for you. I'll never draw lines for you. Like we try to do here, every time we try to draw a clear line, if you don't do these things specifically, you're going to hell. Right? Relax for me. But you know what I'm saying? Like we, you know what I'm saying? If you don't do these things specifically, you're going to go to hell because you draw a very clear line for a person. Now it's not confusing. Now, what does that do? That gives a person a very clear line to be like, I don't want to listen to you no more. Or that gives a person a clear line and say, okay, I know what I need to do. But that's what it does. If that line is not clear, everybody defines that line for themselves. And that's what you do in a Christian church, right? You sit there and they say, hey, if you, if you just believe, you just believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin, that's all you have to do. Right? So in your mind, well, I believe. But then next week you sin and you be like, man, I can't even believe God loved me like this because I just did X, Y, and Z. You scared to even pray. I don't even want to pray right now after what I did last night. And you deal with this every week, but then you get your butt up and you finally you miss a couple weeks of church. But then you get back up and you go to church and that pastor preach you a good sermon and God, God will take you from your lowest and put you at the highest mountain. He'll put you on the mountaintop 
top. And then when you get to the top, you will never drop. And when you get to the top, you'll never flop. And then you go and you sit there and you looking like I'm at my lowest this week. God is going to take me to the mountaintop. And that just that restart you. It's like it's like resetting you. And then you do another three week cycle. You do a terrible sin again and you feel the same way. But every couple of weeks you doubt in your salvation. Why? Because you don't have a line. It's not defined. You don't know. You don't you really don't know. You just got this large concept of believe. You don't know what believe means. That's when we talk, we define these words. Believe it, because now I put everybody in a spot. You either believe it or you don't believe it. And you know what it is. I'm not letting you define it yourself. The book gotta define it. You know what it is. You accept it or you don't accept it. I like it that way. Cause that give a person a choice to make. You can't make a choice if you like, well, maybe I'm saved, maybe I'm not. What you gonna do with that? There's no confidence in that. How you got confidence? Oh, I got confidence. I just know that I know that I know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of my sin. You don't even know what you're talking about. What does that mean? He died for everybody's sin. You tell me everybody go, I mean, uh, everybody, uh, he, he died on the cross for everybody and took everybody's sin. Everybody going to heaven? Everybody going to get into the kingdom? That's what you're telling me? No, he bought your butt. When you buy something, what you want? Whenever you make a purchase, what you want to do with that purchase? What you want that purchase to do for you? I bought, listen, I bought a robot. You know them little robots that vacuum the floor? I bought one. My first one, that thing was nice. That thing was good, better than the one I got now, right? But then it stopped working. What'd I do with it? I threw that thing away. What'd you think he gonna do with you if you ain't working? He bought you. You a purchase. What'd you think he gonna do with you if you ain't working? He come to get fruit. He gave us a parable. He said, listen, I came to get, no, it wasn't even a parable. It was a tree. He said, ain't no fruit on the tree. And he passed by it again. It still wasn't no fruit on the tree. He cursed the tree. Because what you here for if I can't get no fruit from you? That's what it's all about. When it comes to the in gathering, when it comes to the Feast of Tabernacles, what this day, excuse me, what this day represents for us is him gathering us. Right. It represents us the same way that in our time, when we were in our land, we would gather the fruit. Right. The plants, the vegetation, the fields. Right. We would gather everything from the field and we would bring it in. Right. It was the time of harvest for us. So that's what this represents. He's going to harvest us. And we just got to be ready. That's the only job we got. We just got to be ready. Right. Grab uh, grab uh, John chapter 11. This is Sharon. Wait till I get my holy water uh, commercial. You know what I'm saying? When I get my holy water, y'all ain't seen abundance yet, boy. Woo, woo. When I get my, I'm going to go on Fiverr. I'm going to go on Fiverr, pay somebody a couple of dollars, put me up, put together a little holy water commercial. That thing going to be different after that. I'm going to put that thing everywhere. You know what? The people will accept me after that. They'll accept it after that. As soon as you compromise yourself, guess what? Oh, come on in. Right. But if you stand true and you don't hold back on the most high God word, then whatever happens, supposed to happen. That's con you can have confidence in that. You can't have confidence when you crooked. You can't have confidence when you when you taking side deals. Right. But when you straight up and down, you can have confidence. Whatever happened, even if it don't work out, guess what? Wasn't supposed to. Wasn't supposed to because I got confidence in God. This one ain't going to work out, but some it got to. I trust God. When God say the thing got to work out for everybody who love him. I trust him. Okay, it's just a waiting game then. I got to look stupid to the rest of the world. The rest of the world looking like, this is stupid. You're going to stay. You had a million dollar play right in front of you, right? You're going to leave that million dollars on the table just because you trust God? You idiot. God ain't even real. They're going to look at you and you got to sit there and you got to have enough confidence. God be like, I don't care. nothing. I'm not about to hear and go back and forth with you about my decision. I can look stupid all I want. Guess who going to win in the end? That's the story of life. If you stay consistent, you stay down, you do what you're supposed to do. These people ain't going to laugh for long. And I ain't even talking about afterlife. I ain't even talking about the resurrection because that's going to happen too. I'm talking about in this life, he going to have you. He going to set you up in this life to where these people that was laughing, they ain't laughing no more. Think I ain't got laughed at? Lee, I got laughed at. Yeah, they ain't laughing no more. Some of them, yeah. Some of them still laughing. <laughs> you know, there's still some people laughing. That's all right. They ain't going to be laughing long. Because most of our guys just going to keep doing whatever he got to do to shut people up. I trust the man. I trust the man. 
Right? And that's what we got to do. We got to establish that trust. Ooh, that tabernacle. You know what? Let me tell you something. Sharon got some good. She got some good. She named Fellowship Hour. Nice Christian name. Right? Then she named, she gave me Tabernacle Tap Water. I can put that on. A, I can put that on the card. You know what I'm saying? Tabernacle Tap Water? Oh, man. That's some good stuff there. I like that. Sister Sharon, let me trademark that. I'll cut you in. I'll cut you in. It's uh, this John chapter 11. Give me verse 45. John chapter 11, verse 45. Watch the book say. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahushua did believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Yahushua had done. Mm -hmm. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what should we do? For this right. So they got together. Life. Remember, we just read that they was talking to the chief priest and they were talking to the Pharisees. And they was like, man, why you didn't bring them in? They going back and forth like, man, you deceived. You deceived by this dude. So now they talking again. So they looking like, OK, what we going to do? Right. Because at this point, he just raised the man back from the dead. They're like, OK, OK, this guy, I don't know what type of hocus pocus this guy is doing. I can't figure that out. But I know he's not the Messiah. What are we going to do? Because these people going to mess. Right. They'll tell you, watch this. They saw them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Yahshua had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man does many miracles. If we let him, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Right? So he's like, if we just leave it alone, if we don't do nothing about it, everybody gonna believe this man is the Messiah. They knew it because he did many miracles. It's like, oh no, nah, man. If, look, if we don't intervene, that's what they said. If we don't intervene. Everybody going to be tricked by this guy. Because they think it's a ploy. They think it's a trick. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So that's what their concern is. They're looking like if they hoist this man up as the Messiah, they know what the Messiah, the prophecy of the Messiah is. Prophecy of the Messiah is he goes to war with all the nations. Right? That's what they're thinking about. This guy is not fit to go to war with Rome. So they looking like if all the people align around here and they start saying Messiah, what do you think they're going to say? What the Messiah represent for us? King. The anointed one, the king. If they start circling this man and saying king, 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 what do you think Caesar going to say? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he is a king. Yeah, right. So he's going to be like, what king? I didn't put that king in place. I didn't sanction him to be king. There's kings, right? You can have kings. Caesar, as long as they see Caesar as the, the Don Dada, Caesar all right with it. But you got to be approved by me. Who is this guy? And y'all calling him king. He's not approved by me. That's going to cause a war. And the people going to revolt. You right? They the, Look, the Pharisees, the chief priests, the rulers of the people, they looking at this and they like, I know how this is going to play out. This is stupid. There's too many people that's going to believe on him. If Rome come back and they try to stomp him out, everybody's going to be looking like no, and they're going to try to go to war with Rome. This guy is not going to lead us through a war. He's tricking y'all. He's not going to lead us through a war. This man is going to get all of us killed. So watch what they come up with. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest the same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all. No, he said, y'all don't know nothing at all. Look, he just cocky is all out there. He just, he know he, but he's the high priest. He runs the show, right? But he just cocky is all out there. He let them talk. You know, you know what I'm saying? These people, I'm kind of like this at work. But look, you know, these people, they be like, just let everybody talk, throw all their ideas out, and then they get at the end. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. This is all we got to do. We already did make it all simple. This is what he did. Watch Caiaphas. That's a bad boy, though. Don't be playing with Caiaphas. But he's just wrong about this one. Watch this. He know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people. When they say expedient, he's saying it's uh it's best, like it's appropriate for us. You know what I'm saying? It's best for us. Right? So he said it's expedient for us that one man what? One man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And right? So in his mind, he's saying 
it's appropriate. It's best for us if we intervene. Because remember the conversation about intervening. Should we intervene or not? If we don't intervene, everybody going to believe in it. It's the conversation, right? So he's saying, look, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Don't y'all realize it's best for us if we intervene and one man die. In other words, if we kill this one man so that the rest of the nation lives. Right? Now watch what the book say about what he said. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yahushua should die for that nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together, gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Yahushua there. So this died. is where it started. That conversation is where it started to kill Yahushua in his tent, in his tabernacle. Right? That where that's where all of this started, right? So what they looked at is he was given a prophecy by saying one man should die for the whole nation. But he didn't think it was a problem. When he said it, he was just talking about practically, it don't make sense if we let this man run around. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Let's just kill him, is what he's saying. So after that, they start plotting on Yahushua to die. This is how Yahushua ended up dying. It was Caiaphas. He put the plan in place. He made the call. And they was just after that point waiting on how they can catch him. Because you have to understand from their point of view, again, they've been painted to us to be Evil, even I'm not saying they're not evil, right? But I don't want us to think of it as, as they just looking to kill him for no reason, right? They're looking to kill him with their intentions being, I have to say, they think they're saving the nation. They think they they think they think they're doing God a service, right? They think they're doing the right thing by looking at him and saying, you know what? I know he's deceiving the people, but he's so tricky, right? Like I haven't caught him on nothing specific yet, but that boy, that's a tricky boy. You know what I'm saying? He doing these miracles. It look good, but I'm looking at my prophecy and I know this boy don't line up with my prophecy. I can't go along with it. Right. So now the way that they ended up catching him is they or they sat around. They trying to wait for him to sin. Oh, you broke the Sabbath or you did this or you did that. So anything they can catch him on, they trying to catch him so that they can stone him. Be because if they can stone him for a sin, then they can show the people like, see, he's not the Messiah. We about to kill him. If they just kill him and they ain't got any just cause to kill him, if they ain't got no witnesses, it's against the law to kill him, then all the people are going to revolt against them. They're going to turn against them, right? And remember, he don't even have all the people. He just got a big chunk of people. He's famous, right? But he ain't got everybody on his side because we just read that even some of the people was looking at him like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he this guy? Is he that? Right? So it's not completely unanimous. It's just a big old wishy-washy type thing. And they're trying to do it. They're trying to carefully find them. So when we get back to the gospel, we'll go, we'll deep dive into that. But let's keep going. Let's go to our, uh, our law, Deuteronomy chapter 18. I want y'all to just see again what the law says about this type of situation. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse 15. This Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. That's right, says Sharon. It was self-preservation. That's how they was looking at it. And not even just self, right? It was, it was their, their self as in the nation. They were trying to preserve their whole nation. Right? So the thought, the thought wouldn't, the thought and the intention wouldn't have been wrong, right? They actually had good intentions. They had good thoughts and good intentions. The problem was that they didn't have, they didn't have scripture aligned with them. Right? And that's what we, that is the key. That's what I want us to get out of this, because we're going to have to deal with this stuff again. It's going to be a prophet that pop up and the prophet going to be telling us stuff. And he's going to be saying, yo, we should do this or we should do that. I can't predict what the prophet going to say, but whatever it's going to say, it's going to be, it's going to be tough for us to be like, no, that's not how we understand the book. That's not how we imagine that this was going to play out. No, no. Brother Phil told us that, you know what I'm saying? Brother Phil told us that the white folks was going to buy his plane tickets and drive over there. What you mean? We got to swim across the Atlantic. I don't read that. We're going to say, I never read that. I never read in our scripture anywhere about swimming across the Atlantic. Brother Phil didn't teach us that. Brother Phil taught us, what other crazy stuff I'll be saying? Brother Phil taught us, you know what I'm saying, that the Gentiles, be, you know what I'm saying, they're going to take us over and swim. They, he said he, they're going to buy us camels. You know what I'm saying? And then we're going to have to walk across somehow. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. But that's, 
that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at what Brother Phil taught us or what Brother So-and-So taught us or what I saw on YouTube or whatever. And we're going to get attached to these prophecies and we're going to look at it like that's how it has to happen. And then it's probably going to come up and he ain't going to line up with none of that foolishness. But we're going to have book and scripture to line up with what we think should happen. And we're going to be like, no, nah, man, no, nah, the prophet, the prophet's supposed to be Elijah. You ain't Elijah. And we're going to have to figure that thing out on the fly. So I want us to be able to wait. I want us to be able to have enough confidence in the book to wait, to just say, okay, you don't seem like you lined up right now, but let's just wait because that's what the, that's what the law told us to do, right? Let's look at the law. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Watch what the book say. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, how on earth are they supposed to know that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem but left for Egypt for three years when he was a baby and then came back to Galilee. You know what I mean? Well, that's the point. They yeah. wasn't supposed to know. They wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be known by them. It was supposed to trick them, right? But what separates them, the high priests or those that didn't believe from the, from the, the, the other people, right? Remember the criticism that they just gave is the only people that believe on them is the ones that don't know the law, right? So in their mind, we know the law, but that knowing the law for them, Put them on the outside because they didn't know it as well as they thought. Now, we're about to read our law, the very law that they had that they could have used to judge this situation. And it would have it would have preserved them. They would have been fine. Right. But that's what we have to learn It's not it's not necessarily how do we know is what do we do when we don't know? Right. How do we not make an assumption? How do we not say we just don't want to be in a position where we condemn the man of God or we threaten or kill the man of God? Just because we moving too fast, just because we so afraid that God don't know what he's doing. It's like, oh, man, this sinner going to come up and trick everybody. So we got to kill this man or we got to stand. We got to stand with the president to be against this man. Right. No, sometimes you just got to sit back, mind your own darn business. Let me just see. I don't know. I don't buy it. But I ain't about to stand against it either. So shame. Right? I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, prophet. But I'm going to just wait and see. You know what I'm saying? I'm just wait. Wait and see how it play out. And that's a gamble even for us. Because if you wait and see how it play out, it's going to be somebody that completely buy in, just like y'all sure. They don't know their left hand from their right hand. They just look and they like, what he say sound good. I'm going to follow him. But by doing that, they lucked up. They lucked up and they walked into their Messiah and now they the first ones. Peter and them didn't know who they were dealing with. They just looked at him like, all right. They from Galilee. They don't, you know what I'm saying? That boy wasn't, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't like they wasn't like these high prestigious people. They just looking like, all right, yeah, you seem like the real deal to me. You did some miracles. They wasn't searching the scripture to look for. Oh no, nah, you line up with this, that, another. No, they just start walking. They just followed the man. That's a gamble because that same person, if some liar came, they probably believe that liar too, right? But the benefit is, I blindly trust you, and then over time. I'm critical, I'm critical, and I'm learning stuff. You're teaching me stuff, and I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. That's normal. It's going to be a benefit with that. You're going to get a higher rank. It's going to be nice, right? Then it's going to be people who know the scripture so well, right? And then we're going to have to measure the scripture against what we see. And we might back up. We might say, mm -mm, I'm going to give it some more time. I don't know if I'm sold yet, right? We might look at the scripture and be like, well, now, now you're on the outs, right? Yo, route. To get there, you believe the scripture, and if he prove it out, you're going to follow him too, right? But your route might be a little different, whereas the people that believe him right away and just follow like sheep, right? They're going to, you know what I'm saying? They're going to walk across the Atlantic on dry foot. You might got to paddle. You know what I'm saying? You might have to, you know, all right, I don't believe you now. You know what I mean? You might have to come a different way. It might be a different route. It was some people with Yahushua, right? They were standing in um, the day of Pentecost. They were standing in that place where the spirit hit them. Not everybody was there. It was only 3,000 people there. Some people, some people were somewhere else. Some people were doing different stuff, right? Nicodemus, he, he believed in Yahushua, but he stood with the Pharisees, right? He didn't get the experience itself that the disciples experienced. It's a different experience depending on how you align yourself and how you follow and what you do. At the end of the day, though, we just got to make sure we get it right. That's it. Right. It might be a different route. We might have to paddle over there. You know what I'm saying? But as long as we get there, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, so you got to kind of walk by faith when it come down. But our faith got to be based off of the book. Watch what watch what uh, Deuteronomy say. It tell us exactly how to handle this. 
The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto mm -hmm. whom shall you hearken. According to all right, so this is Mo this is Moses. Moses telling us, yo, it's gonna be a prophet that's gonna be just like me. When he come, you gotta listen to him. Right? Watch this. According to all that you desire of Yahuwah your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah my God, neither let me see the great fire anymore that I die not. And Yahuwah said unto me, they have well spoken it, which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I should command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Mm hmm. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him, commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that. Right. So I now he's telling us, right. He just told us about Yahushua. Yo, one day Yahushua going to pop up when you see him, you got to hear him. You got to listen to him. Then he come back and he tell you, but the prophet that talk on itself and I didn't send him and he just be running his darn mouth. What do you say about what should, what should we do? Even that prophet shall die. Right? He said that prophet gonna die. Watch this. One second. Huh? One second. That's the end? No, hold on. Um, all right. And if thou if thou say in thy heart, how shall we know the words which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahuwah, and the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Right. So that's how we determine it. If Yahushua will pop up and he say, "Yo." Out of my belly, I mean, out of your belly come living waters. All you got to do is wait. Like, all right, let me see if I see somebody with living waters come out of their belly. Right? Yeah. Whatever he say, if you are skeptical, just like the, the high priest was, according to our law, if they were skeptical, they were supposed to wait. Our law says, wait to see if what he says come to pass. He does the miracles, Right? But the miracles are not prophecies. They're works, but they're not prophecies. Right? So remember, miracles could be duplicated by Satan. We learned that from who? Who we learned that from? Uh, what about Moses? Yeah, Moses said, uh, even if it, even if they do a miracle and try to persuade you to go against another God, you shouldn't, you shall not follow. So that's what I was gonna answer to Sharon. Since so Sharon is like, you know. If the miracle, the miracles he was doing, but Moses also said, even if a man's doing miracles and he presumed you to follow after another God, you got to kill him. So that's why the Pharisees didn't know, because you got Yahushua saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, which is that goes against our law. We can't eat the blood. So you got the Pharisees looking at him like, who is this crazy man telling us to drink his blood? We don't even we don't even drink blood. That's against the law. You know what I'm saying? And then he's saying. uh he says stuff like, like uh, he doing all of these miracles, but they looking like, okay, even though he do miracles, he telling us to eat his flesh and drink his blood. That can't, he can't be the guy. You know what I'm saying? He's telling us to break the law. That's right. So what they looked at is he didn't qualify according to the prophecy. And, and in some situations they were thinking like, you know, he broke the law or he, he was teaching people to break the law or, or he was okay with people breaking the law. Right. So they tried to use that against him. Because they're looking at it's safe for us. We have to kill him in order to preserve the nation, right? But we know miracles by themselves. They wasn't wrong with that, right? With the miracles, that they're right to not just believe based on it's gonna be miracles, right? It's gonna be people that pop up 
that do wondrous things. And we're going to think it's magic or miracles and all that. And people are going to look at those people and they're going to be like, that's the man of God right there. He's going to pop up and be like, look, you know what I'm saying? I can make fire come out of my hand. And you know saying? I don't know. I, I got to read Revelation again, this type of stuff they was doing. But in Revelation, they talk about the beast, the false prophet doing miracles. So that's going to happen. The miracles are definitely going to happen, right? We are going to look at that and we're going to be skeptical just as they were of Yahushua, which is appropriate. Now that you're skeptical, the law tells you to just wait to see what he says come to pass. If the man tell you, drink my blood, eat my flesh, that is not a sin according to our law, right? If someone does it, that's a sin according to our law. But him saying that, that just at the best, you a false teacher at best. All you got to do is wait like, OK, don't be listening to him. That's bad teaching. Right. But wait, he ain't committed a sin yet. When he commit a sin, you get him. If you don't commit a sin, you wait. If something that he says comes to pass, well, that's a bad boy. And guess what would have happened when the man said, oh, on the third day, I'm going to rise up. And he rolls up on the third day. You can't find his body. Now you own to something. When everybody start popping up saying, yo, I saw his I saw him appear to us just like he said he was going to do when the spirit hit on the 50th day. You know what I'm saying? After his death, like all those are things that you would look at and be like, oh, he was for real, because that's exactly what everybody did or not everybody. But that's exactly what a lot of people did after he died. All you would have to do is just wait and you wouldn't have that blood on your on your hands about having them killed. There's a lot of people that wanted them dead that stood there, sided with it. And now they got that blood on their hands. Right. Keep going. Uh, no, actually, it's Deuteronomy. Go to Acts. Let's Acts chapter five. Because I want to give you all an example of somebody who used this law. Right. So Caiaphas, that was a bad boy. But Caiaphas was wrong in how he handled it. Right. Now I'm about to show you all somebody named Gamaliel. You know what I'm saying? Gamaliel. You know what I'm saying? Ain't a whole lot written about him. But just based off of how they talk about Gamaliel, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Paul learned at the feet of Gamaliel. You know what I'm saying? And Gamaliel handled this situa situation like a real one. Right. He showed that he really understood the law and the way that he handled this. Watch this. This is uh, Acts chapter 5. Give me verse 33. And yes, Sister Pamela, you are absolutely right. Right? We learned at Egypt when Moses, when Moses was, was doing the miracles, he turned the water into blood. And then what did the magicians come back and do? They turned the water into blood too. Right? The next one is he turned the, the, the staff into a sna uh, snake. He actually did that first. Right. And what did the magician do? They did the same thing. Turn staffs into snakes. And there was one more. He did. They did one more. Which one? Locust. No, it wasn't the dark. The frogs, I think it was. Yeah, I think the frogs. Right. But they couldn't do the flies and they couldn't do the fleas. They couldn't do all these other things. Right. All the rest of them they couldn't do. But it was three of them that they was able to do. Right. So we are going to find. That Satan can replicate miracles or stuff that looks like miracles to us, but he won't be able to replicate prophecy. He won't be able to re replicate anybody committing righteousness. That is the difference. If you got people and you and, and people from what you teach end up being righteous, that's how you know. Like that's the results that we look for. Like, okay, this person teach righteousness, he uphold righteousness. That's gonna separate the real from the fake every single time. That's not always, you can't really, really see it all the time because you don't have insight to everybody's life all times of the day. So then what you have to base it off of is, okay, let me just wait. When it comes to a prophet, right? This person's a prophet. You say that's how it's going to be. Okay, let me just wait. One of the two is going to find out. You're going to find out that you're a liar and a sinner and a hypocrite. Or you're going to find out that he told you X, Y, and Z was going to, in 2030, you know what I'm saying? This is going to happen. This building is going to crumble and this, that, another. Okay. Let's just wait. 2030 come around. That didn't happen. No, not rolling with you. Right. Because the most High God said it's going to come to pass. Right. Keep going. This is uh, this is Acts chapter five, verse 33. When they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one of the council of a Pharisee named Gamaliel. A right. Gamaliel, that boy. He stood there. They about to kill him. They, they talking about the disciples. This is after Yahushua died. 
They about to kill the disciples. Gamaliel stood up, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like Caiaphas, right? He let everybody talk. Caiaphas, he stood up like, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. This is all we got to do. We just got to kill a man, right? Gamaliel, in the same way, he stood up, but the opposite take. Watch this. Then stood up one of the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of law, had in reputation. When the book say doctor of law, it ain't talking about he on the operation table, right? Doctor means teacher. Expert. Right? So even like the doctor, that you, you get your doctorate, what they're saying is, you know this well enough to teach it. That's why it's like the highest, you know what I'm saying, I get one of the highest, I guess, um, degrees you can get because they're saying you're well enough to be a professor in this subject, right? You could teach this, right? So that's what he's saying. He's a doctor of the law, so that... I teach the law is what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm an expert. I teach this thing. That's why Paul, Paul learned the law from this guy, the same guy. But watch what he said. Had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up that Thutius, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was all slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought. Right, so he said, listen, it was this one guy, y'all don't remember him? Remember Thaddeus? Yeah, that boy came up, and what he, he had everybody convinced he was the one, huh? About 400 people followed him, didn't they? And they all got killed, scattered, right? What else happened, Gamaliel? And a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to nothing. After mm -hmm. this man rose up, Judah of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also right? is a guy named Judah from Galilee. Just look how Satan play, right? Gamaliel is telling us this, but it was a guy named Judah from Galilee. Do you see why some people are skeptical? Because this just happened. Gamaliel just said not too long ago, it was a dude named Judah from Galilee. Now you got another dude named Yahushua from Galilee talking about he the Messiah. So some of them, they kind of like the book don't really tell us this other than this, but you can imagine some of them kind of looking like, are you like this last dude that popped up and he was a false? So everybody kind of like, is he real? Is he not real? The Even the chief priests and the Pharisees, they looking at it like, mm, I don't know, man. That last guy almost got us in trouble. Look, but watch what Gamaliel says. After this man, Judah of Galilee in the days of the taxing drew many, many much people after him, drew away much people after him, and he also perished, and even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel of the, of the, or this work be of men, it will come to nothing. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily you be found even to fight against God. Right. So you can see that the book is telling you, just wait. Gamaliel understood the law very well. So he said, yo, everybody relax. Y'all remember them three boys, all three of them. They thought they were somebody and they all got killed and it came to nothing. Listen, if this these guys right here are teaching some bad doctrine, it's going to come to nothing just like them. But if we put our hands against it and it ends up being of God, we're going to find ourselves fighting against God. He's basically telling them there's no upside for us. If we get involved, there's no upside. That's how Caiaphas sh should have handled it. Right? He was supposed to look at it and be like, listen, listen, listen. Let him do what he's going to do. It's going to take care of itself. Because our law don't let us intervene in this. Right? But that's difficult to do when you're worried. Right. When you have worries and you're afraid and you think something going to happen, they fear Rome. They didn't fear God. They fear Rome. They looked at it as Rome could cause something to happen to us if God didn't want it to happen. That's when you when you start fearing stuff more than God. That's kind of what your mindset is going through. This thing can happen to me even if God don't want it to happen to me. And as soon as you have that, that type of thought process, you fear that more than you fear God. That's not supposed to be your mindset. Your mindset is supposed to be. I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, let me get myself together so I can do what I'm supposed to do. And as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, 
however it play out is the way it's supposed to play out. Y'all see were walking around here. Maybe he deceiving people. Maybe he not deceiving people. I'm going to wait and see. Maybe Rome is going to come take us over. Maybe Rome is going to stomp us all out. That's what's supposed That's what's supposed to happen if the law say that's what's supposed to happen. They ain't none of my business. I got to back up. Then you put God in a tough spot because God needs somebody to kill Yahushua. So God like, dang, none of the Israelites going to do it. All right, Gentile, come over here and do it for me. Right? Like God would have to change the plan and set it up a different way because he got to use what we give him. But we just always got sinners, people that don't trust God, people that are scared of everything. You can't be scared of these people. You can't be scared of nothing that's going to happen. You always got to walk in the confidence of the Most High God. And that's easier to do when you serve the Most High God, when you believe when, in the Most High God and when you, when you uh, turn away from all your sin. It's tough to do. It's tough to do while you're sinning. You can't, you can't trust God when you're sinning, right? But when you turn away from your sin, it's easier to do. You can walk into it. That's why Gamaliel, he kind of stand up. He a teacher of the law. He kept the law. He stand up like, I ain't worried about these boys. What I'm going to be worried about these disciples for? That thing don't bother me. These boys walking around talking about Yahushua, Yahushua, Yahushua the Messiah, Yahushua the Messiah, talking all this stuff. That don't bother me. I keep the law. I know my God. I serve my God. I don't know what they talking about. Maybe it's real. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Let's just wait and see. He take that approach. He's all right. He just saved everybody in that circle. They about to put their hands against him. You know, most like I was going to strike their butt down. They about to put their hands against him. He just saved everybody. He don't even know it. Just like wait and see. Wait and see. Remember, even Paul, who came from him, Paul didn't have that attitude. He didn't have a wait and see attitude. Remember, Paul held jackets when they had stoned in them boys. They had killed them boys. That boy, Paul was like, no, nah, I got your jacket. Throw your stone, too. No, no, I got your jacket, too. That boy is the water boy with them boys stoning. That thing was crazy. But Paul's mind was, get these sinners out of here, because he thought they were sinners. Our mindset got to be wait and see. Right? Take a step back. Let me see what's going on. Let me just make sure. Right? Give me Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. What do I want? Verse 1, probably. In Matthew chapter 22, we'll start it at the beginning, verse 1. Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. And Yahshua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son, and sent mm -hmm. forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, mm -hmm. he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all the things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And a remnant took his servant and entreated them spitefully and slew them. All right. So we have to look at this, this great day that we celebrate today. This is the, this is the, um, this is the, the wedding feast. All right. So what we're looking for is our invitation, all right? The way we get in, the way we, the way we get invited into that spiritual wedding feast is by obedience to Messiah, right? When we, can, when we submit our lives to him, that's how we get that invitation. We can say, okay, hey, you can join this wedding. So that's what this is, that great day. That's basically saying, hey, this is the wedding, right? This is going to happen on real scale where he's going to say, yo, 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 I'm gathering everybody in. Some people going to be invited. Some people not going to be invited. So this parable that Yahweh was talking about is talking about how, how it played out. We, Israelites, were invited naturally, right? We then sinned against the Most High God. He null and voided our, our invitations, right? That's what it's talking about here when they say they treated him scornfully and they started to, you know what I'm saying, kill the messengers that he sent. He's talking about the prophets that he sent. He sent prophets to our people and our people killed some of those prophets, right? Because we didn't like what they was talking about. We saw some of this already when we looked at Amos. You remember the guy ran down Amos? He's like, yeah, man, Amos, man, take that stuff down to Judah. We in Israel. We don't talk like that up here. Because Amos was just trying to tell him, like, look, Moses, God said X, Y, and Z about to happen to your nation. He's like, man, listen, man, we don't want to hear that stuff, man. You in the king's court, take that stuff down to, to Judah. We don't play that stuff around here. A Ahab, too. Ahab, too, right? Remember Ahab? He slapped, uh, what's his name? 
Micaiah. Yeah, he slapped Micaiah. Well, slapped him across his face. He said, look, he said, he said, look, pro- bow, you a prophet? Tell me where that slap came from. He smacked that boy. Right? All McKay had to do is eat it, too. He had to, all right, all right. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. You're going to be dead before you know it. He told him, okay, I'll tell you what. You think I'm joking? Okay, you're going to be dead. They're like, okay, yeah, Will. What'd he tell him? He told, uh, what, 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 uh, what Ahab tell him? He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll come back or something, right? Ahab was like, I'll basically, like, I'll deal with him when I get back. And then yeah. McKay was like, he told me, he said, I'll see you when I get back. McKay was like, yeah, if you come back, surely I'm not a prophet. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. boy said, listen, if I see you again, I'm not. Everybody, look, put me on notice. I'm not a prophet if this man come back talking to me. I'm a liar. Just what we just read. If he come back, this one, Micaiah making a big deal out of it. If he come back, oh, I'm a, pro- I'm a false prophet. I'm just like the rest of these liars out here. Right? That boy never came back. Got killed right in the field just like Micaiah said he was going to do. Because that's how the book work. Right? But the, the, the kings and the prophets and the people, man, when they don't like that word, they'll fight against it. They will fight against it. And they kill some of these people. So the most high God is using the parable right now through Yahushua. And he's telling you, he's looking like, listen, I sent people to invite to the wedding. And these people didn't, they didn't respect my invitation. He's talking about the prophets. They even killed some of my servants. He's talking about the prophets. Keep going. Watch this. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city, burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden are not worthy. When they say bidden, it said they, they which were invited. invited. Right. So those the ones that was invited, they wasn't ready. So guess what he's going to have to do now? Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. When the right. Came in so they sent up, invitations to everybody. Right. Everybody got an invitation. Book say both bad and good. That's Yahushua dying for us. He died for everybody, good or bad. Right. Now you ain't got to come in through the law. You can come in through his sacrifice. Right. But now you got to obey what the Messiah say. Right. Watch what the book said. When the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how comest thou in here not having a wedding garment? Your clothes ain't right. This is for the Christian to tell you come as you are. How you good? I'm just trying to figure out how these Christians, they took the whole Old Testament. All they kept of the Old Testament was the Psalms and darn Proverbs. They got the whole New Testament. This in the New Testament last time I checked. We read in the New Testament. It tell you, yo, yo, yo. You got an invitation. Okay, that's true. That's true. But I don't like what you're wearing. You ain't got on the right clothes. You ain't got on the right garments. Why don't you have on the wedding garments? Let's see what happened to him. Let's see if he say, oh, don't worry about it, Christian. Go to the back. I have an extra outfit for you. Even, Watch this. Even Solomon said in the Songs of Solomon, may your garments be white. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Even Jacob. Remember when Jacob, Jacob decided to go back to Bethel? He is looking like, uh, hey, all y'all, take off them earrings and all that jewelry. He told them, take them all. Wasn't no darn, come as you are. He's like, take this all. We about to go serve the most high God. Right? We never had our whole, our whole, you never going to see anything in our book that talk about approach God however you are. That's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Everything with the most high God come with submission. Matter of fact, when you got to come through the feast, you can't come empty handed. Can't come in here. You can't come. You better bring something. Sure, three times a year, you got to bring some books that you got to have some, some type of offering. Keep going. Watch this. And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many mm-hmm. are called, but few are chosen. So that's what happens if you your garment, you got an invitation and you actually decide to show up. But your clothes are not right. The clothes here is the behavior. Right? We make our clothes, our spiritual clothes, right, pure through our behavior, through turning away from sin. It's going to be a lot of people. And you know I pick on Christians. But it's going to be a lot of Christians and Muslims and a lot of these other people that think they serve God. These Muslims are going to be thinking, okay, 
I'm about to blow myself up in this mosque. Now, they wouldn't blow themselves in a mosque. Where they? I'm going to blow myself up in this school. You know what I'm saying? They be doing some wild stuff over there in the Middle East. I don't know what's wrong with these people. But I'm going to blow myself hey, up. Hey, what, if, what if we go down there and find out that they could miss? And they're like, no, we, we don't do that at all. <laughs> that ain't be out of line. That ain't be wrong. That ain't be out of line. Now, I don't even be looking at American news no more. You know what I'm saying? I took all American news out. All my news is is just different countries of the world, but all of them be saying these Muslims be blowing stuff up. I be looking like maybe that thing is true. These boys are crazy. But no, because they be saying from what I read at least, they be saying that they believe if they kill themselves for a holy war, that they, they wake up to seven virgins. Seven virgins. Well, yeah, and we, and uh, when they go in their kingdom, they got all the birds. They ain't little hornball. They looking like you the, know what I'm saying? They probably virgins right now. The they probably looking thing. like I ain't got none. None of these women will touch me. The women with the hijabs on. You can't even see them. You know they stuck up. I'd be stuck up if I had to wear a darn thing like this. Please, boy, you couldn't touch me. Well, if you don't get your darn, you shouldn't even look in my darn direction if I got to wear a darn. I'm hot under this thing. Hot, darn, sweaty. And you think you about to look at me? No, it's going to be the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? I want the be- I want the one that own the oil fields. You, come here. So- I ain't got time to be playing around with no... What you look like? I got a hijab. I'm sweating on my darn mustache under this thing. And then you walk up to me talking about, hey, baby, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? Ain't got a dollar. You wearing Air Force One. Boy, if you don't get out of my darn face, I'll tighten up my hijab so fast. i tighten that thing up, boy. If you don't get out of my darn face and walk away from it, darn butt, I ain't got time. None of these women with a hijab on playing that stuff. They hot under that thing. You playing with them. You got to come. You got to come with some air conditioner. That's crazy. Right? But they, you know they stuck up. So you probably, what's probably happening is they can't get certain women that they want. And they don't even know what they, it's a gamble because they got the hijab on. So it's a gamble. You don't even know what you're working with under there. So it's looking like if I kill myself, I'm going to get seven off the rip. They little hornball, they bow, blow that thing up. And they looking like there's my seven coming. That's what they believe though. So it's going to be a whole lot of them that show up. And it's going to be Christians right behind them. Oh, no, Jesus Christ. I believed in you my entire life, that you died on the cross for my sins. You plus nothing else. All grace, all this myth that they be talking about, and they're going to die too. They're going to be right behind the Muslim. Then it's going to be the Jewish man, right? What the Jewish people be believing? They be believing in wow, so you can't oh, no. get into the Christian, the Jewish the Christian might know something up when they see the man and he's going to be a black dude. No, nah, but they ain't even going to get that far. They just going to die. Like the Christian, the Christian just going to die. You know, Christian going, all Christian die of like, Natural causes, you know, what I'm saying? like Christians don't be getting into no trouble. You know what I'm saying? They be Christians, you know, what I'm saying? they get they they die a natural. You know, what I'm saying Christians just gonna, you know, have like a heart condition or something. You know what I'm saying? So the Christians just gonna, you know, and then wake up and they gonna be like, oh crap. You know what I'm saying? Like the Christian, but I thought, you know, but Pastor Jenkins told us. You know what I'm saying? Like Christian ain't gonna know. Christian ain't gonna know. They ain't gonna be none the darn wiser. Y'all sure gonna have to explain to them why they there. Let me explain. Sorry. <laughs> Let me explain. You were lied to. <laughs> I know you didn't. Like, I think the Muslim going to get it as soon as he get there. He going, boom. Crap. <laughs> There's not a virgin in sight. You know what I'm saying? But the Christian, they going to be like, no, 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 no. I need to speak to your manager. They going to be talking about y'all sure. <laughs> I need to speak to your manager. Y'all sure like, listen, you don't get further than me. You know what I'm saying? This is it. This is it. I'm the guy. You know what I'm saying? Let me talk to you. He going to have to calm the, the, the Christian down. But then you going to have a Jewish person. Right. And that Jewish person ain't going to be the same thing. He didn't read his Torah. Right. He didn't did everything he is supposed to do. he be praying three times a day. he be, you know what I'm saying? He got a, uh, he got a, uh, what the, what the Jewish people be doing? They be doing crazy stuff. He, uh, he got his circumcision, his Gentile, but he didn't cut his thing. You know what I'm saying? Bleeding for seven days. He did it as an adult too. Cause he's a convert to Judaism. Right. And he gonna cut that thing. He bleeding all over his darn self. Can't do nothing for a couple of days. It finally healed. And then he get killed. And then he gonna wake up. He gonna be like, you mean to tell me I cut myself for darn nothing and I'm about to go to hell after this? Right? It's gonna be a lot of people that got this invitation. Right? And they think they showing up. But their garments is not right. So, and the question. most high God is gonna tell they but turn around and they gonna have to go where it's weeping and it's gnashing the teeth. Darren What'd you say, brother T? She was asking the question like, why were the why were the garments not furnished for the guests? 
So in Revelations, it tell you when Yahushua was talking to the righteous that are dead, he they were like, how long are you going to take before you avenge our blood on the earth? And Yahushua was like, yo, just take these white garments, these all white garments, and just wait, right? So he gave the righteous white garments, you know what I'm saying? So that's another thing. That's another reason why Solomon said what he said in uh, the Songs of Solomon. Or it might have been Songs of Solomon or uh, Ecclesiastes, but he was like, make sure your garments are always white. Like Brother Phil was saying, that's like the behavior. So everybody had an invite, right? Yahushua died on the cross, right? Now everybody has an opportunity to come to him for life, but not everybody will do that. But at the end of the world, God, Yahushua is going to raise up everybody, uh, all of the dead, those that done good, those that done bad. Gonna separate let's them. grab that go to john chapter 5 for me john chapter 5 verse 19 it's john chapter 5 verse 19 yeah you don't get white garments unless you're righteous yeah that's the only way to get it So when he saw everybody at the wedding supper, he was like, hey, how'd you get in with this type of garment? So that's why he kicked him out. He ain't had the right garment. Though. Yeah, get your butt up out of here. That's equivalent to where it say, uh, you know what I'm saying? Have we not prophesied in your name and done many wondrous works? And Yahushua say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Right. Those two things are talking about the exact same event. Right. You get tossed out because you don't have, excuse me, you get tossed out because you don't have a white garment is the exact same thing as being tossed out because you're a worker of iniquity. In other words, a sinner, someone who hasn't conformed their behavior to the Messiah. This is uh, John chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Yahshua and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For what mm -hmm. things soever he does, these also doeth the son likewise. Mm -hmm. For the father loveth the son and shows the, shows him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Mm -hmm. For the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Right? So he said, when they say quickeneth, it's talking about making alive. So he said, the son can make alive just like the father can make alive. Keep going, watch this. For the father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the son. That all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is mm -hmm. passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the son of God and they that shall hear shall live. Right. So they that shall hear shall live. What happened? Whereas the father has life in himself, so has he given the son to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Right? Everybody up. in the grave, not excluding anybody, everybody in the grave shall hear his voice. And what's going to happen? They'll come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Uh-huh. So if you did good, if you had a white garment, you go into the resurrection of life. And what else? They that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. What came first? Life. The resurrection of life comes first, right? That's why I grab uh Psalm 82. We can finish off with this one. Right? You have to be resurrected. That's the hope that we have. Everybody gotta die first. And after you die, that's what uh, we ain't got to get it. But that's what Hebrews tells us. Hebrew chapter nine. It tells us um, it is appointed all men to die. It is appointed once all men to die. And after that, the judgment. And that's what y'all. She was talking about that. He is the judge. He's been given the authority to judge. So now he can speak and everybody going to hear his voice and they're going to all live. Or everybody going to everybody going to come forth. Right. Out of the grave, they're going to come forth. And then some going to go into resurrection. And some gonna go into the, the death, the second death, the condemnation. All right. This is um this is uh Psalm 82. Go ahead and start at verse one. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, he judges mm -hmm. among the gods. 
how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Mm -hmm. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They right. will not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are, are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the most high. But you right, he said, ye are, are what? Gods. He said, ye are gods. Right? And all of you are what? Children of the most high. And all of you are children of the most high. But what? But ye shall die like men. But you have to die like men. Right? So the scripture is telling us that you have to die. In order to become sons of God. Right. If we are to be children of the most high, like we are by faith, you have to die first. That's the resurrection. And we're going to be like God to these rest of the people because we're going to be like God. Right. There's a place where Yahushua this is another thing. Uh, we ain't got to get it, but there's a place where Yahushua, uh, Yahushua used this because they, Yahushua said, I and the father are one. Right. And so they they picked up stones and they was about to kill him. But Yahushua came back and he was looking like, OK, well, listen, if you go like you going to kill me because I said that I am the son of God. Right. However, your own scripture tells you that ye are gods. And he quoted this. Ye are God. Ye are gods. You know what I'm saying? Children's of the most high. Right. And he quoted that. But he is like, but your scripture say that. So if you're going to hold me at guilt for saying it, how you how you believe the scripture? Right now, although what he was saying technically is not what this scripture is saying, technically it's not at least, right? But he used that against their logic. That's why it's important for us to understand the scripture and understand how it's used and how it's appropriated, so, right? So one of the big misconceptions is a lot of Christians and a lot of people be like, hey, we're all, we're all children of God or we all, we're all sons of God or we're all God's children. That's not true because not the way they use it. So in the scripture, you would see right in Luke when he when he go when he's going over the genealogy of the Messiah, it says the son of God, who is the son of um, this person and this person, he go all the way back to Adam. And it said Adam was the son of God. Right. So the scripture only called Adam the son of God, Yahushua, the son of God and the heavenly beings, the sons of God in Job. Right. Yeah, like oh, angels, right? right? When you talk about angels and stuff direct, like that, direct, they call them direct, son of God. Direct creations from God, the scripture only calls those that were directly created from God, sons of God, like the angels, Yahushua, and Adam, because God directly created them, right? So the only Whereas way us, sorry to cut in, whereas us, we weren't directly created from God. We were, we were, we were we descendants were of Adam. Right. So that's why you'll see in the book, it calls us, even the Messiah is also called son of man, because not only was he directly created from God, he was also directly created from uh, Mary. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like God's spirit is his father. Right. And Mary is his mother. So he's both son of man and son of God. So Right. Whereas the rest of us are son of man, son of Adam. So when when John, when John would say um, how. I think I'm paraphrasing, but it was like how blessed we are to be called the sons of God. He was saying that the resurrection, when we become like directly created beings from God, because in the That's resurrection, right. God's going to create us himself. We're not going to come out of the womb like from a woman. You know what I'm saying? So that's when that's why you will see the apostles say we are the sons of God, because they say that in faith, because one day God's going to remake us. You know what I'm saying? So they're not talking about the sinners that get put into hell. You know what I'm saying? So everybody used that term loosely, like we're sons of God. It's like, no, the only way we are sons of God is through faith. We say, okay, I know if I obey Yahushua, when I'm resurrected, I will be like one of the angels. I will be a, a, a son of God, right? And we will live with him forever. So that's uh, that's another, that's, that's one thing that you got to know. You got to debunk all of the myths and the things that people say. It's like, oh, we're all God's children. It's like, no, the the through faith yes but if you're not if you're not living through faith and if you don't know what faith mean and if you're not operating off based off what the book is saying then that term would be kind of misleading absolutely yeah very well put any questions
Adam. Mm -hmm. Men and women. No questions. They said they good. Alright. Wake up. Okay, when you wake up every morning. Up. I'm a descendant of Adam. You're a descendant of Adam, okay. Third the most I got. Grab uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 for me. And that's a good question, right? So the question was, knowing that knowing that we are all descendants of Adam. What you, what you thought about today? Y'all doing up in this up there? Yeah. Somebody who's been living a certain way for so long, acceptable practices, hell, the rest of the Mm-hmm. Somebody come. Mm-hmm. That's right. What is my answer every day? Wake up, modernize, I'm walking around. Robes and passwords and stuff hang. But we could. But look, this is this is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, right? We could. We could. Because the yeah, the dress and everything else, all that stuff is 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 based off of the times, right? Just based off of the culture of where we live. But the 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 motivating thought, right? I think if we had to sum it up in one verse, Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, what's the verse I want? What's the last verse? Thirteen. Is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve? I want a little bit before that. No, thirteen and fourteen is what we'll read. This is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Watch what the book say. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Right. So this comes after Ecclesiastes was written by the King Solomon, one of our greatest kings. Right. So this comes after he 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 writes an entire book, just kind of explaining how everything means nothing. You work as hard as you can. You get a whole bunch of wealth and then you die and you leave it to your kids. Right. You don't do no work. You lazy. Right. And you die and you leave nothing to your kids. Right. But it's like at the end of the day for you. Yeah. What does it mean? Like, what's the point? Right. So he goes through all these examples of how it's some people are lucky. Some people are unlucky. Some people have this. Some people don't have this. Some people do this. Some people don't. But at the end of the day, they everything is meaningless. Like nothing has any meaning because everybody has the same path. They die. Right. So at the very end, he said, OK, well, what's the conclusion of the whole matter? Let's read it again. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Right. At the end of the day, the entire purpose of a man, in other words, when they say man of a descendant of Adam, that's what man means. Whenever you read man in the Bible, it's saying the whole di duty of a descendant of Adam is to keep the commandment of God. Right. We now understand and have our commandment of God, just like Moses told us from the prophet that came that was just like Moses, who is Yahushua. And he tells us a list of things. Let's get a list of things for him. This is a um, this is a uh, Mark uh, chapter. What I want Mark chapter seven. Let's do verse 20. This is Mark chapter seven, verse 20. Is our starting point. That's a good question. When a man needs a change, right? When a man or a woman said in their mind, let's change. Well, what do I refocus my thought? Because Yahushua told us. You remember Yahushua told us? He said, listen, a man cleans up his house, right? And gets all the demons out of there. Then after that, seven more demons worse than the one that, uh, worse than the demon that he sent out is going to come and take up the space. Right. Because now you got to replace that space with something else. You got to be able to not just not just get rid of your sins. But now you got to change your habits to where you fill up your time with righteous things rather than filling up your time with emptiness. Just so sin can creep back in. Right. And you'd be worse off in the end than you were in the beginning. This is uh, this is Mark chapter seven, verse 20. 
Watch what the book said. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man. Right? So man, this is the stuff that defiles the man. He said what? But within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adultery. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. Adulteries. Fornication. Fornication. Murders. Murder. Thefts. Theft. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Evil eye. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Pride. Pride. Foolishness. What's that foolishness? All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Right? These are the things that come from inside of a person. That's what's going to defile you. That's going to prevent you from getting into the kingdom. That's what should be on a man's mind every morning when he wake up, every night when he go to sleep. It should be on his mind. How do I keep the commandments of God? Right. And the commandments of God firstly starts with the commandments that came with Yahushua, because Moses, who gave us the law, told us the one who comes, that's a prophet just like him. He's the one that you have to listen to. So in order to do what Moses say, you have to do what Yahushua say. Yahushua said, turn away from those things we just read. And then after that, you can go back to, to doing what Moses or not go back, but you can continue to do what Moses say and keep the law. But the purpose, Moses told us himself, if you're not doing what Yahushua say, then you're not doing what's required of you. Right. So Yahushua said, turn, from, turn away from those things. Add that to keeping the law. You'll be great in the kingdom. That's what a man should have on his mind. That's what a woman should have on their mind. Any other questions? All right. Love you too, Sister Pamela. Love everybody in there. Hey, Sister Donna, Brother Arya. This is Sharon. You know what I mean? Always giving me a couple good laughs. It's always one in the crowd. And I saw somebody new in the chat. I didn't, I didn't recognize the name. I'm going to have to go over it after, after study. But yeah, y'all have any questions? You know you can always listen. If you don't catch us live, you can always catch us fellowship hour. Just reach out to me. I'll send you the invite to it. And then you can always uh, just text a number on here. It seems like I ain't getting no text message no more. I used to be always bogged down with text. I ain't complaining now. But I'm just saying, if y'all still got questions, you can still text us. You know what I'm saying? You can still give us a call. I ain't heard from nobody in at least a couple of weeks. Um, or you can join, join us on the uh, fellowship. Um, all right. Well, I will talk to y'all tomorrow on the fellowship call. Y'all have a good one. Let's pray out.